So, so why, did I, why did I continue? Why does everybody continue? You know, it's comfort level. You get stuck in a situation where you're making a living. We've all been there. It's tough to get, uh, it's tough to uproot your family. It's tough to get off the pole. And I, I was a decent revenue generator and I worked that pole. And I could not get off the pole. But my colleagues and I also had something called uh, learn helplessness. You know, it's that phenomenon where an elephant, you tie a large rope on an elephant's leg on one end, and on the other end, you can tie it to a stake, and the elephant will fight for a while, and then it's going to stop fighting. And you can get that rope smaller and smaller and smaller. The elephant doesn't want to fight anymore. That was us. My colleagues and I would complain to my bosses, contracts, you know, metrics, whatever, and they were so proficient in verbal judo, confusion and distraction that we never could win, ever. It, it, it was absolutely amazing. We would complain and they would say, well, thank you for bringing this to our attention and I hear you. You're a valuable asset to this organization. And then they say, then they bring out this a metaphorical shell game, you know, with three shells and there's a ball underneath, they start playing the shell game, okay? It's, uh, they'd say things like, you know, you can look for a job somewhere else, but you won't find a comparable salary anywhere else, and you live in a very beautiful provincial city in New England, where it's basically the jewel of the north meets the pearl of the east, okay? So look for the ball. And we'd say, I don't know, that one? I'm like, ah, not there, okay? <laughs> and we'd give up. Now, we live in a nice place. It was okay in Maine, but, you know, it was a poor state of Maine. I was not on the coast. I was in a mill town. It was 20 below in the winter, and I worked in a federally qualified health center, which is a very difficult patient panel, but we bought it. We ate it up. That rope got smaller and smaller and smaller. <clears throat> we went back to them later on and said, hey, listen, you know, doctors are leaving. And they did leave, but we couldn't get anybody to fill the position. So we'd go back and say, you know, what are you going to do about this? Because I, I need someone, to, you know, I'm doing more call. I'm not getting compensated for that call. And I'm getting more documents thrown into my, into my system. I got a sign. What are you, how are you helping us? Get us another doctor. And they'd say, thank you again for engaging us with this. You're a valuable asset to this organization, so I appreciate that. And then they'd say, they'd bring out the, they'd bring out the shell game, and they'd say, you know, we've played a very expensive consultant. And that consultant said that, you know, the salaries out there that they're offering are outliers, and we can't compete with that. And it looks like we really can't find anybody to come up here this far north. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. you know, my colleagues would be like, oh, okay, and they start leaving. I'm like, guys, where are you going? What about the whole jewel of the north and the pearl of the east thing? And the, the hypocrisy. And I turned back to the, uh, the administrators, and they're still playing the game. Like, pick one. I'm like, I don't want to pick one. Pick one. That one? Ah, not there, okay? The ball was never there, guys. We never found our balls, okay? <laughs> the flaw? What's the flaw with us? Too kind, too trusting, too altruistic, too giving. What's the goal threatened? Just wanted to be the doctor we wanted to be without obstruction, to, be, to help patients, to actually have a you know, truly great relationship with our patients. But you can't. You can't in this environment because the lay of the land is poisonous. Julie brought this up. And basically 54% uh, morale is negative. 63% of negative feelings now about the future of the profession. 49% they often or always experience burnout. 49% wouldn't recommend this to their kids. Every other doctor, in other words, is compromised. Every, one, every other one of you guys are compromised. Every other doctor you bring your kids to is compromised. Every other colleague you work with is compromised. And I've seen this. This is what we wanted, right? We wanted to be the doctor to give a lollipop and spend time with our patients. And this is what we got. Now, I feel bad for this guy. I have no idea who he is. I ripped his picture out of the internet. It wasn't about being burned out or anything, but he represents everything that's terrible about this job. Is this what we all expected to be as a doctor? Did anybody envision being a family doc doing this? This guy's not staring at the patient. He's miserable. He's typing in the computer. Right now, medical profession consistently hovers as one of the highest risk of death by suicide. A doctor kills himself or herself on average each day in this country. It's not doctor heal thyself, it's doctor kill thyself. We, it's great that we want to work with the system, but what if the system truly never wants to work with us? I mean, that, we have to come to that conclusion at some point. Um, because when they control us like they have, and we keep trying, we burn out. 
And that's what's going on right now. It's the biggest new fad. Everybody's talking about doctor burnout. Everybody loves it. And thankfully, I actually have a tear in my eye here. There's an organization that's truly helping us out now with this. The AFP and burnout. Ah, <laughs> oh, just thank, thank goodness, okay? The AFP, let me read some of the things there at their recent proceedings. They joined the National Collaborative to Promote Condition Well-Being. They joined the House members to spark burnout. I don't know what that means. Speaker charts path from physical burnout to well-being. I bounce back from burnout by setting boundaries and priorities. I filled my prescription against burnout at the gym. Try probe tool to help stave off burnout. What the hell's the probe tool, right? <laughs> okay, I, I thought I've been probed for years. Um, can mindfulness meditation deliver us from burnout? And my favorite, physician burnout, the AFP is winning battles for you. And to that, I'm like, okay? <laughs> That's like throwing dice in, in Vegas on the craps table and you're the chips. I'm not sure what you thought that gesture was. All right. <laughs> I, I'm, actually, I'm right-handed, so that didn't, didn't make sense at all. Um, 